it's all time I'm gonna go back to train so I can go still do it. Thanks for all you've done, Valimar. I'll be counting on you if anything else comes up. Acknowledged. Prepare yourself for your next encounter with the Azure Knight, my awakening. Don't worry. I will. We lost last time, but I know that's not all I'm capable of. As long as we're all together, I know I can get stronger. I eagerly await your results. Looks like he went to sleep. So, this is what the great Ashen Knight looks like up close, huh? I've heard all manner of rumor about it, but... I never expected I'd stand in the presence of a legend. I can't possibly begin to thank you enough. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't come to my aid. Thank you. Really. And that goes for everyone else, too. Thanks for coming to rescue me, guys. <laughs> We're just happy you're okay. Just don't scare us like that again, all right? <laughs> True. We were all on edge waiting for you to get back. <laughs> And yet you somehow managed to come out unscathed with her highness in tow. You make it sound like it was easy. Well, easy or not, it was worth going on board. I got plenty of useful info out of it. So funny enough, I'd say their invitation worked to my benefit more than theirs. <laughs> I guess there's no harm in looking at the positives now that all's said and done. Look at you, acting mature and all grown up. Brings a tear to my eye. <laughs> Looks like we have some catching up to do. I'd like to follow Reen's lead, and extend my thanks to each of you as well. Thank you, all of you. And, dear brother, it's a relief to see you safe and sound. Though I never pictured my great escape would end with you in this airship, of all things. <laughs> we did time our appearance fabulously, if I do say so myself. My only regret is that we weren't able to blow in with a storm of rose petals when we boarded them. Hmm. Perhaps I should have asked Emma to look into the feasibility of making such a magnificent entrance. Oh man, that would have been so cool! Well, it's probably not impossible. No, you're just being silly. Sounds about right for our prince. <laughs> well, at the very least, I'd say we're clear of any immediate danger. And given this opportunity, I'd like to sit down with you to discuss our situation and exchange any pertinent information. But first, I think we have a few more reunions to celebrate. Reen! Uh. Toa! George! I thought I heard your voices when we started flying away from the Pantagruel. So you were on board too? <laughs> you bet. Good to see you, Reen. Whoa! It, it's really you! You're really okay! No sooner had we found out that you were still alive, we got told you had been taken by the Alliance! We've been so, so worried about you! I'm a real troublemaker, aren't I? Sorry, Toa. But I'm glad to see you and George made it out okay. Everything I've said to you has been at the back of my mind ever since we parted ways in Trista, and it's kept me going every step of the way. So, thank you. Oh! <laughs> you remembered. You promised me you wouldn't die. And you didn't. We still need to work on that one. But I know you're not the kind of guy who'd go back on his word. See? Green's a guy you can count on. Nice to see you're holding up okay. Still can't believe you made it through all that fighting in Trista in one piece, but... Well, here you are. Good to see you again, George. But how'd you two end up on the Courageous to begin with? We'll bring you up to speed once we all sit down for our meeting. There's a conference room on one of the upper floors. We can meet there when you're ready. Courageous began its independent operations right before Heimdall was first occupied. I realized what the Alliance was planning, 
So I gathered a skeleton crew, met with Viscount Arsade, and we hurried straight to Trista, where we found your classmates locked in combat with the Azure Knight. I see. That explains why you were in Trista. I shudder to think what would have happened if not for the Courageous's timely appearance. What have you been doing since then, Father? I hadn't heard anything about your whereabouts until now. Eventually, we were able to shake off the Azure Knight's pursuit. And we've been traveling around the country ever since, preparing to find you and take you on board. George and I haven't been here long. The principal managed to get in touch with the Courageous without anyone noticing and sent us here. He did? I hope he's still all right. By the way, what happened to Major Vander? You two are always joined at the hip. Ah, alas, he is currently indisposed. His military obligations have him heading up the 7th Armored Division in Western Erebonia. They're working with your former instructor, Major Nightheart, as well. With him, too? So he's over in the West now. Huh. <laughs> I should have known the 4th Armored Division's ace wouldn't get his ass kicked so easily. Oh, right. Dad said he'd heard from him, too, remember? Still, the west side of the country contains Marquis High Arm Sutherland Province, along with Duke Cayenne's La Mer Province. The fighting there would no doubt be even more fierce than it is here in Eastern Erebonia. Correct. A large percentage of the Imperial Army's military strength still remains intact, but the Noble Alliance Force's constant attacks have put them at a disadvantage. On top of that, a number of townships in the region have been caught in the crossfire and suffered great losses. That's terrible. <sighs> I'd heard as much, but it still pisses me off to hear it. With the 3rd and 4th Armored Divisions occupied on the eastern side of the country, one can only assume the Noble Alliance intends to use that as an opportunity to crush the forces in the West. Yeah, but they're not stupid. I bet the army in the West is putting up a pretty good fight by themselves. It's too early to call things just yet. An astute assessment. The situation in the Western Theater could change at a moment's notice. Right. But that means we're uncertain what course to pursue now. And having said that, we have a question to pose to all of you. The question, really. With the whole of the Empire caught in the throes of civil war, what exactly do all of you intend to do from here on out? Us? We were in the midst of discussing that when Reen was taken to the Pantagruel, in fact. Hmm. This is a full-on war, and our fellow Erebonian countrymen stand on both sides. No one here is delusional enough to think that a group of students like us are capable of stopping it by ourselves. Still, during our field studies, we found ourselves up against the problems this nation faces again and again. And because we have that experience, I believe there's a place for us to change things in all this. A part only we can play. We may not be able to compete head-on with the Alliance, but together, we can move things in the right direction for Erebonia as a whole. <laughs> that was wonderful, Reen. Hmm. Hmm. Still, we aren't all gathered here for the same reasons. Be it rescuing Elise or settling things with Crow, we've all got something that we personally want to accomplish. But accomplishing those things won't be possible with the situation as it stands. And that's why, no matter how stacked the odds are against us, or how fierce the fighting becomes, we want to put everything we have into making all the difference we possibly can, in whatever way we can. I think I speak for everyone in Class 7 when I say that. You bet. I agree completely. We may all come from different walks of life, but this time, that can work for us. Exactly. We have something no one else does, and because of that, we can do things no one else can. And what kind of class would we be if we didn't take advantage of that to protect the people and things we love? As well as find our own answers to the questions we have looming over us. As Reen said, however big or small it is in the long run, we have a place in this war, and we have every intention of following it. Sounds like it'll be a pain, though. Eh, no biggie. We're class seven. Throw in a few of Reen's trademark speeches and we're raring to go. <laughs> Look at you kids. You all sound like you've really thought long and hard about this. <laughs> That's the class seven I'm proud to serve. And you guys aren't the only ones who feel that way. Everyone at Thor's has something to bring to the table. Remember the Academy's motto? Arise, O oh youth, and become the foundation of the world. Oh, yeah, 
That's right. That was what Principal Van Dyke said to us at the welcoming ceremony. The words of Dreykel's The Lion Heart serve to inspire us to this day, it would seem. Of course. They ring as true as ever. <laughs> it's like you didn't even have to think about it. You guys just knew. Yeah, you should be proud of yourselves. And it's true that Thor students are scattered all over the country right now. But I'm sure that each and every one of them are fighting too. And they feel the exact same way that you guys do. I understand, Your Highness. Indeed. I figured you would have already given it some thought, but I wasn't expecting such a stirring conviction. But I think this at least settles the matter of what course to take. If you would do the honors, Captain. As you wish. We are about to do something neither side would ever expect us to do. We're going to entrust this ship to you. From here on out, the Courageous is yours to command as you see fit. What? What? Um, father, would you mind elaborating? <laughs> it means exactly what it sounds like. The operation of this ship will be left entirely to your discretion. I imagine your journey to make a difference in this war needs a home base to begin from. Well, yes, but... But then what will you do? We plan to disembark and make our way to the Western Provinces. Once there, we'll begin working with the 7th Armored Division and the other neutral forces in the region. The intention is to ensure that as few innocents as possible are harmed by this conflict. I was actually worried this airship might prove a bit too conspicuous to aid us in pursuing that goal. But with us headed west, we'd be leaving all of Eastern Erebonia in your hands. Um... Uh, I see. That does make the most logical sense. Kinda. If we got the Courageous, we could give our third faction some real weight. Neither side could afford to ignore us. <laughs> I'm not even sure the Guild could come up with a plan this wild. <laughs> well, it's fair to say I've learned a lot from the way the Guild's members handle things, yourself included. Oh, and Alfin? Yes? I'd like to ask you to remain on board the Courageous as well. This ship is technically the property of the Arner household, fathers in particular. It should give them a certain freedom to act if they have concrete backing from a member of the Imperial family. <gasps> <laughs> I'd be happy to! Henceforth, I, Princess Alfin Rice Arnor, will guarantee the legitimacy of their actions. So do whatever you see fit to do. You have my full support. Th thank you, Your Highness. Wow! We are truly honored have you with us. No turning back now. Yeah, seriously. We hereby humbly accept custody of the Courageous. Please, leave Eastern Erebonia to us. We'll be counting on you then. <laughs> I'm looking forward to toasting your future successes. I'm leaving you in charge of the Courageous's day-to-day -day operations. I don't doubt you'll make a fine acting captain. It would be an honor.
Irene, I'd like you to accept this. I hope that it will prove to be of some use to you in the challenges ahead. Thank you, Captain. You've done so much for us, especially in Ymir. I can't begin to thank you enough for helping to protect my hometown. <laughs> you needn't thank me. I just did what I felt was right. I wish you all the best in the future, not as a member of the RMP, but as a graduate of Thor's Military Academy. Thank you. We'll do all that we can to meet your expectations. Yowza! Things are getting nice and steamy over there, huh? Oh? Hmm. Uh-oh. I feel like I'm losing in the race for most reliable big sister figure all of a sudden. Well, you get a gold star for trying. Well then, it's time we bid you all a fond farewell for now. Chin up, Alfin. I'm counting on your charm to keep everyone motivated. May the goddess be with you. I look forward to the stories you'll have to tell when next we meet, Laura. Good luck, Father. Well, there they go. You think they'll be okay on their own? Only the goddess herself knows for certain. Still, with some already calling this a second advent of the War of the Lions, I can only hope they make it through unscathed. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they'll all be just fine. They don't bear the symbol of the Horned Lion for show. Yes, I suppose you're right. And the same goes for me, too. I can't very well call myself a Thor's alumnus and fail to deliver. Well, well, are we birds of a feather. Proud Thor's graduates unite. <laughs> I'll be in touch with them plenty in the coming weeks, so don't worry. The old guard will do as it must to keep watch over the young and vigilant. Speaking of the old guard, Chancellor Osborn was also a Thor's graduate, was he not? Yes, he was. <laughs> Sorry to say, I can't picture it. Was he now? He and I may have had our differences. But I still feel a certain loss with his passing. I'd like to express my condolences to you while I have the chance. I'm afraid I never had the chance to truly get to know him. But there's no doubt in my mind that he was one of the greatest men of our time. Thank you. Still, it must be tough for you with Heimdall under the Alliance's thumb. Were you able to find out where his funeral was held? Actually... <sighs> Captain? Is something amiss? It's just that I received a strange report on that very issue. I was told his body was taken into the custody of the Imperial Guardsmen when the city was occupied. But then after that, it simply disappeared at some point. Disappeared, you say? Is it possible the Reformist faction could have taken it from them? I'm afraid I don't know. It is possible that the Intelligence Division did something to that effect. Hmm. A disappearing corpse is certainly cause for concern. It's difficult not to draw parallels with the Lance Maiden's sudden death following the War of the Lions. <sighs> Unbelievable. I'm almost impressed how much trouble one man can stir up, even from beyond the grave. He had so many plots in motion, I doubt even his death put a stop to them all. I need Vestantine, Thorin No change in weather or wind direction since entering Kreutzen Provincial Airspace. We are currently cruising at a speed of 3,000 SPH. Nothing abnormal detected on the radar thus far. Detour around the Twin Dragons Bridge, staying within the clouds. Take extra care that we aren't noticed by the Noble Alliance's surveillance. Yes, ma'am. Wow. She's a real natural at this. Yeah. It's hard to believe she's only been in the position for a day. Indeed. She has proved a worthy captain in Father's place. <laughs> As if anyone could fit the role better than our student council president. She still looks like a mascot character, though. That's just one of her many charms. Yeah, and besides, I can feel at ease knowing she's in charge. So, today's the day we start our journey anew, right? 
Right. We settled what we'll be doing last night. Now all that remains is to do it. Well, Toa and George should be able to handle the day-to-day -day running of the ship, so that's out of the way. And whatever we decide, it's not like we're going to be able to do anything major today. Still, I think it's time we start hammering down exactly what we're going to be doing from tomorrow onward. In theory, the Courageous gives us the ability to fly around the whole country with ease. But, in reality, the Noble Alliance has control over most of Erebonia, so we're limited in where we can actually go. Yeah, we don't want to risk getting too close to Alliance territory. We'd run the risk of being captured, or even worse, being shot down. It's sad to think how we barely have anywhere we can land with an amazing airship like this at our disposal. Care to share your thoughts on this instructor? Oh, you kids can just do whatever you want. I lost the will to put in any effort after Captain Classy got off. You slacker. I'm pleased that you think so highly of my father, but... Maybe Laura can hook you up with a one-on-one -on -one lecture on the Arsade School of Courtsmanship if you know what I'm saying. I was kidding. In all seriousness, if you need more people fighting in whatever you end up doing, I'll be happy to help you out. Just don't forget that the Courageous was entrusted to you kids, not to me. If you want my advice, then you got it. But you need to be able to make all the important decisions on your own. Uh, of course. <laughs> you almost sound like an instructor for once. Getting back to the matter at hand. We don't need to decide everything right at this moment. What say you to figuring out how and what for now? Come again? I assume what would be our overall goal. Something realistic that we can all work together towards. And the how would be a basic idea on how we intend to achieve it? Uh-huh. It's a little trick we use in the student council. It's easier to get motivated when you have a specific goal in mind. You guys were doing the same kind of thing in the weeks before the Academy Festival, remember? The concert was what you were working toward, and all your other planning was how you intended to pull it off. I see. That makes sense. We did spend a lot of time before and during the festival working out all the details, come to think of it. Not to mention taking care of the things we couldn't plan, like the strange stuff at the old schoolhouse. We were coordinating with all of the other classes and clubs at the same time, too. When you break it down step by step, we did so much without even realizing it. And we may have our own personal goals right now, but if we can wrap those up into one overarching goal, it won't seem half as much. How about making it something related to the Academy itself, then? Now, I was thinking the exact same thing. I wonder what's happening there. Toa, George, the Academy is currently under the Noble Alliance's control, right? That's right. The staff and students who are there are doing what they can, but... As you know, during the attack, a lot of the students managed to flee Trista and are now scattered across the country. Now, most of the upper-class students chose to stick it out, though. They've got no reason to fear the Alliance, being nobles and all. All right, then. I think our what should be taking back the Academy. That sounds good to me. The Courageous will serve as a good means of transport, but we'll need a proper base sooner or later. But with it? We can get a better look at the current state of things in Erebonia and try to reach out to those who are in need. And whatever information we learn along the way could bring us that much closer to liberating the Academy. Can't see taking it back going that smoothly, though. No doubt. It's near the capital, so its defenses are going to be rock solid. Still, I like it. What goal is more worthy of us than reclaiming something we hold so dear? Indeed. Regardless of personal motivations, I can't think of an objective more fitting to us as a group. And if we actually manage to achieve it, the sky's the limit for us. <laughs> I'm genuinely moved by your positivity. Well, their optimism is probably their strongest point. We were thinking of something along the same lines, in fact, so it works out. And hey, if we all thought about it, what's to stop the others from Thor's from thinking it too? So if you happen to bump into anyone who escaped from the Academy, why not go and ask them to join us? I'm not saying it has to be your primary focus or anything, but the more people we have on our side, the better. That's a great idea! Yeah, we'll be sure to keep an eye out. Uh, we have about the bare minimum crew we need to fly at the moment, but it's not like this is their full-time job. I'm sure our current staff won't be here forever, so we're gonna need a few extra hands on board at some point. Ideally, we could have whoever's here now stick around long enough to train anyone we end up recruiting. I know our numbers are small right now, but the more people we can get on our side, the higher chance we stand of making Trista and the Academy our home again. 
and I don't know about you, but I get this weird sense of satisfaction knowing that we students are gonna be the ones to do it. <laughs> I know the feeling, actually. Everything works for me. I'd say that's our how decided, wouldn't you? Agreed. To wrap all this up, we'll use the Courageous as our base and as a way to get a good idea of the current state of things in Eastern Erebonia. Along the way, we'll try to recruit as many fellow Thor students to help us out as we can, all for the sake of our primary goal, taking back Thor's military academy. The new baby get these quests is pretty awesome. I like it. Let's pick Laura, then Sara, and Emma, and maybe Juicy. Let's see. Let's pick to Sarantova. We go to one app first.
Interesting. That is really awesome. Oh, we can even customize it. Let's see what he actually sends on. Oh, cool. I need to follow the orbital bike. And there's a new master quartz also. Bug is here, let's try customize it. Yellow coloring. Hmm, standard or yellow. Well, I think I'll keep the yellow one now. Yeah, it should be fine.
you played this, seems now, let's just play the card game. I'm not best at this card game, but let's try me no match. Okay, let's get this thing going. Go on, draw a card. Looks like we need to draw again. <laughs> I'm up first. Alright, we go to the next floor. Let's get some new weapons.
look at this vehicle. So amazing. Next floor. Now we can go back to bridge. And I'm done with this video. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe like the video, and I'll see you guys next time.